if you feel uncomfortable, it's a good sign. I mean that you might be up to something really big and true and authentic. So, Eves, thanks for uh, joining us today. So, you've been at Colgate Palmolive for the last 20 years. Yes, I know. Okay. So, obviously, in that time, you've seen the company change. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, kind of like, how you think it's changed and yes. it's heading. Uh, a lot. It's historically, you no, know, 24 years. When I joined Colgate 24 oh, years okay. ago, I thought I would spend a few years there and then go back to uh, the industry I love, which is cosmetics. Uh, but it's a company that I fell in love with uh, because a lot of ethics. So it's been there forever. Uh, but what I see now that it's becoming more and more important. So it's something, the purpose, the need to take care of diversity, inclusion, uh, the need to move marketing towards a place where we really make a difference in the life of people uh, is a massive change. Of course, you have all the technology as well. Uh, that has transformed the business over time. Uh, but I want to focus on the other one because I truly believe that's where we need to go. So I've, I've heard um, your CEO uh, say that culture starts at the top. Yeah, With regard okay. to uh, D, D and I. So I, I, I'd love to kind of understand a little bit about what, what that actually means. It means that we are role models. Uh, it's, uh, if you ask me uh, what I think about the week, uh, there is still a lack of diversity. Uh, I was looking around uh, myself in the room, and still lots of uh, white male people. So it's great to talk about diversity. It's great to make people aware of the need to be more inclusive, but now we need to do it. And the only way we can do it uh, is through the top of the house. We need to, to, uh, to, to show that, yeah, we talk about it, but we believe in it, we act, we're courageous, and we do it. And then it will trickle down in the organization. So that's the only way. The, 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 the organization has to push, but we have to show that we believe in it authentically, that we're courageous, that we take action. I'm going to jump a little, but it, it's, it's connected in, in, in some ways, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll come back to it. But I, 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 I'm, I'm interested about data. Yes. And, and, and as a marketeer, kind of, it's interesting because I, I feel like um, over the years, you've seen, like, particularly at Cannes, you've seen the conversation about yes. data kind of um, because, you know, increase. But is, is there such a thing as us relying a little too heavily Data. So it's not relying too heavily on data. It's uh, thinking that two things, that data will predict what the future will be about. Why data usually will tell you what will happen in the future if nothing changes. So that's something you need to be aware of. If you disrupt data, data will not be able to cope with that and predict what's going to happen, number one. And, and number two, somebody said this week, I heard on, on stage, uh, we shouldn't be scared that machines will become human. We should be scared that humans will become machines. And that's what happens with data. You look at data, they are dry, and you think you know everything. Uh, data will never replace authentic contact with people. Uh, on my way to the interview, I was reading an email I got from uh, our marketing director in India. He, he's just uh, spent some time with people in the village. And he wrote something quite uh, moving to me. He said, uh, I'm with a family, uh, the eldest, uh, three kids, the eldest has a hole in the heart, the second one has a mental sickness, and the third one just burned her hands due to an electric shock. Data will never replace that. So you need to stay in contact with people, because if not, you lose, you're going to lose the empathy. And empathy is everything. So I love data, but human touch is critical. Empathy, I 100% agree, in terms of the importance of us to kind of not just no consumers, but like actually feel what they feel. But how do you how do you go about creating a more empathetic marketing organisation? It's uh, that you know back to diversity. Uh, again, if you have a room for, full of uh, white male people, usually from good background, you know, get white male people advertising. Uh, if you really want to have empathy uh, for people. Uh, you need to, to make sure that you have a very social, cultural, diverse team, number one, and number two, that you push them to get out there. This is, again, the danger of data, spending your entire day in front of your screen, trying to predict the future. Get out there. Uh, don't forget that most of us were making quite a good money. That's not the rule. 
So get to places where usually you don't go to really make sure that you talk to people that makes you uncomfortable because they are not the ones that you're talking to usually. And then you don't have some empathy. Ask questions. Don't uh, prone for answers. Really try to understand the pain points in the life of people. Truly understand. Don't stare at the surface. You, you, when you do that, you start to get to insights that are Absolutely. richer and, 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 and drive for kind of better work. Absolutely. But I guess it, it, you obviously uh, work across a region that, that, that uh, as you move across it, kind of cultures are very different. So how do you, how do you kind of ensure that you, you're both kind of very reflective and, and relevant to consumers, but actually people that are very different culturally? Now it's a good question. And again, you, you asked me a question about empathy. That's all about empathy. And, and I would combine it with curiosity. Uh, if you go to places explaining to people how the world is based on your lens, uh, then you will not grasp this authenticity. If I go to Thailand, that's one of the countries I'm taking care of, and I'm explaining to the team how uh, single moms or moms behave, who am I? So again, ask questions. Ask questions, ask people to take you outside of the big cities, ask questions to take you to where people live, uh, and, 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 and you get the insights. And don't, don't look for things that will make you uncomfortable. Naturally, marketers don't like things that make them uncomfortable because you know, the, the answer to the question would be tough. I, I keep telling the team, if you feel uncomfortable, it's a good sign. I mean that you might be up to something really big and true and authentic. Yeah, so embrace discomfort. Embrace discomfort, look for discomfort. It's even like as somebody said that great ideas never came from comfort zone. Uh -huh. So if you, have, if you have an idea that is truly new and you ask people if they will like it, they will say no, because they, will, they don't know what it is. Yeah. Same with insight. If you have an idea, a campaign, where people tell you, oh, I love it, not good. I prefer when people are scared when I show, I show them something, because it means that most probably I'm up to something big. Yeah, I, it's, 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 we, we, we often are, are scared of the reaction to new ideas. And so very quickly, we're looking at the data and it, it feels like it's negative, but really what it is, is it's just different to what people are used to. Absolutely, and ask the right question. I, I give you an example, I work on shower gel. Uh, if you test new, new, new smells, vanilla will always win. <laughs> if you ask people, what do you want to, be, they, yeah. to buy? They will tell you vanilla, they will tell you aloe vera. You change the question. And you tell them tomorrow, if you go to a store, you see all those, uh, uh, those, those smells, which one do you want to smell? Which one will you grab and smell? And then vanilla goes to the bottom of the list. Uh, because suddenly the new news, the newness, is something that is very attractive. Yes. While if you ask about purchase, people will go to the comfort zone and they will grab what they want. So ask the right question. Interesting. No, well, actually, thinking about questions, and I'm, I'm going to merge a few things we've talked about, because, um, you know, most of the data we receive is either behavioural data or we've gone out and asked questions through research. Um, but often the, the source of that data is not necessarily reflective of people. So there are biases in the data. So kind of how, how do we kind of work around that and, and kind of achieve, like, I think, what, what you've been talking about? I, I, believe in, yeah, I believe in qualitative research a lot. Uh, if uh, the, the um, design thinking lab in, San, in Stanford will tell you that it's enough to talk to five people to know if you're right or not. So uh, uh, again, data is great at giving you leads, possibilities, but there is nothing that replaces the direct contact with people. Take the data, have hypotheses, double check them with people. And doing so, as you say, make sure that you're, you, you are really talking to the right target. Uh, in November 2022, uh, I downloaded ChatGPT. <laughs> like, like what it seems like the rest of the industry, and everything has kind of changed since then. Certainly, the conversation. Um, lots of organisations now trying to figure out how they leverage generative AI yeah. into, into their organisations. I, I, I'm curious to understand kind of what you've sort of done in the space or exploring. We are starting. We are like we. AI has been there for, for a long time. Uh, ChatGPT suddenly brought it to life and, 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 and ChatGPT is showing what's happening in the back, back, back stage. So but it's been there. 
So we've been using AI for quite some time right now. I think what ChatGPT is doing is that it's forcing us to think strategically about AI. So what will be the role of AI today and tomorrow? And what does it mean in terms of organization? We don't have the answer. Uh, it's just starting. We know it's going to stay. Uh, it's not a trend. It's going to stay. So we are getting organized. And we, uh, we, uh, but we need to do it quite fast because it's moving fast. It's moving super fast. I mean, as you said, November 2022, like first time I heard about it, I said, what is it? And now everybody's using it. My kids are using it every day. So it's for this time last year, I, I was probably having this conversation but about the metaverse. Yes. That obviously, I, I, there was a lot of hype last year. It, it, the hype has certainly gone away. But the metaverse hasn't necessarily. And so I'm, I'm interested in kind of what, what needs to happen in that space for, for it to kind of, I guess, probably take off in terms of adoption. And you know, we're learning with the metaverse. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced it will stay, it will become bigger, but most probably in a different form. Uh, so we, we are starting, we have our first project, we want to use metaverse with dentists. It's doing well. So, like in many things in marketing, you need to have a clear pain point in mind that you, will, you want to solve for. Metaverse will not solve for everything. Uh, but they can solve for a few things, if you are very clear about what you're doing. That makes a lot of sense. If anything, maybe without the attention and kind of the hype, it can actually find <laughs> its uh, footing and we can find real uses for it. Hype is always a challenge. <laughs> because hype, it's in two ways, it makes some things too big for what they are, and it kills some of the things that are not taking off where they could take, take off. So hype is great, uh, but we need to step back and really look at the tools for what they are again, once more. Looking forward in, in five years, ten years, or whatever, however far into the future you want to think about it, but like, what, what do you see on the horizon as the next either challenges or opportunities kind of in, in, in the marketing space? Our sustainability will be one. We really need to, uh, I mean, if, with e-commerce, with all the packaging we are generating right now, with the climate change, with all the challenges we are facing in terms of plastic, uh, we need to talk about sustainability. Uh, a huge challenge we have right now is that I feel we went too far into personalization. So we, we really need to see how we can both personalize uh, the future, make it uh, in a way accessible to many people. So it's personalization as mass. And health. Uh, health is big. But health, both physical yeah. and mental. Yeah. And the second one being a very, very important one. You, you can see the world is not mentally healthy right now, and COVID didn't improve the situation. So mental health is critical. I, I've been talking recently to people about um, the need to understand sort of all the social determinants of yes. health. Because then you, that you start to realize that like, there are so many things that impact our health. With that in mind, pretty much every brand can actually be a brand that can have a positive impact on people's health. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we're about smile. I don't know if you know it. Oh, it? yes, yes, I do. We're, actually, we're, I do. Yes. we're about smile. Uh, and a smile can make you feel better in terms of stress, uh, may lower your blood pressure, uh, will make you look more successful, so more confident that people don't smile. So simply, yes, we can do a great job in terms of health, uh, giving people the right product to brush that. If, but if we can make them aware of the need for them to not hold their smile, because we hold back their smile, because when they smile freely, they're happier and healthier, that would be great. So th those are the things we can do. But again, if we truly put people at the center of what we do, let's fix the mental health program. We have money, we have advertising, we have products, we have rich. Uh, must bring more, more than the governments have. We can make it, but we need to truly believe in it. Absolutely. Yves, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. It's my pleasure. <laughs> thank you.